Well, so far, there are nearly a dozen candidates who said they intend to run for the leadership of the party. Several others are said to be thinking seriously about it, and that includes Conservative MPs Michelle Rample Garner and Candace Bergen. But so far, the only woman candidate for the Conservative leadership is Ontario MP Marilyn Gladue. The MP for Sarnia Lambton is a chemical engineer by profession. She joins me in our studio now. Good to see you. Good to see you. Peter. Thanks for being here. Uh, why do you think you're the best person to lead the Conservative Party? Well, Peter, in order to win the next election, we need a few things. First of all, we have to expand the base. And for that, we need a strong, dynamic leader, somebody that will be appealing to other Canadians, and I think I'm that person. And we also need a better balance in our policy of fiscal responsibility and social compassion. I think Canadians love, uh, you know, what Conservatives do in terms of lowering taxes and creating jobs, growing the economy. But they're also looking increasingly for people who are going to help our ailing health care system, uh, come with a credible climate change plan, and have some compassion on Canadians that are in difficulty. Seniors that can't afford their bills, people that can't pay for their prescription medications, veterans that are homeless, and, you know, people s trapped in the affordable housing crisis. So far, you're, you're getting a better idea today of, of who your opponents will be. Uh, you know, Peter McKay declared on the weekend, Aaron O'Toole launched his campaign uh, with a video today. Um, let's start with Peter McKay. What do you think of Peter McKay as a potential leader? What's the difference between you and him? Well, I think, uh, you know, Peter is a fine gentleman. I, I have met him a number of years ago and, of course, watched him. I think the question is, can Peter expand the base or is it the same old, same old? that we're going to get in the Conservative Party. That's really the question. I've not seen what he's going to run on yet, but I'll be interested as uh, we go forward. Certainly, he's experienced in Parliament and experienced uh, in the real world. This is really important. I've got 32 years of global business experience as well as parliamentary experience, and I think both of those things are needed because we're in a minority government, so we don't have the luxury of waiting while someone gets trained up on parliamentary procedure. We need to hit the ground running. So, so do you think the, the, time he's, the previous time he's spent in politics is an advantage for him, or is it bag? Of, as some might suggest. Uh, for him, it's both because uh, he does have experience, but there were also, um, you know, topics of the day, and people will remember that. Uh, what about Aaron O'Toole? He, he's in the race type, uh, painting himself as the defender of resource jobs, uh, talking about also the need to unify the party, but also uh, suggesting that he's not a political lifer, and that maybe, uh, maybe a bit of a shot at, P at Peter McKay. What, what's do you think uh, is the difference if people are starting to consider those choices between you and Aaron O'Toole? Well, I think when it comes to uh, protecting the natural resource sector, especially the energy sector, I've got 32 years of experience in the petrochemical industry. I think I spent a lot of hours in Alberta and working in that industry, and I understand that industry, mining, nuclear, the bio and renewables industry, and that's experience that I think will help uh, repair the damage that's been done to their economy by the Liberals. In terms of uh, having the balance, as I said, that's important. Aaron is certainly a fine individual and uh, I look forward to seeing what the membership thinks. All right, but why would you be a better leader than Aaron? Uh, well, to be honest, I think that uh, I can reach out beyond to more Canadians. I uh, was a youth leader for about 35 years. Young people like me and I like them. And I think that Aaron may have that sort of old military white guy look about him that may not be as appealing to the younger generation who are becoming the largest voting demographic. Right. Um, okay, uh, let's talk about some of the issues. Do you, uh, I mean, as a chemical engineer, you talked about it, you, you've worked in the petroleum industry. Where do you stand on a carbon tax? Well, a carbon tax is not a very effective way to get a reduction. You know, BC's had one for 10 years and they've only reduced by 1%. Europe has had one for 19 years and they've only gone down 8%. Uh, clearly, we're not going to meet our Paris targets with that. So I would prefer a mechanism that addresses the top emitters in the country. And I'd be looking to put in an incentive regulatory scheme for major industrial emitters and in the transportation sector to address uh, diesel emissions in trucks, increase the amount of rail in the country uh, and in buildings I think we can green the buildings up but also there's uh, a number of solutions that will be important um, especially in the north. What's the difference between what you would offer as a climate change plan and what Andrew Shear was offering? Um, actually, my plan will be credible because I'll be able to show Canadians His with a wasn't? graph. Uh, well, you know, the themes were good, but the way that it rolled out, it, it turned into a lot of bureaucratic programs, a green standard, a green innovation fund, things that the Canadian public said, well, how is that going to actually achieve the target? How much are you going to get in reduction from this initiative? How much from that initiative? Where's the chart that shows we'll meet the Paris targets? And where's the chart that shows how we're going to leverage that in the world to help solve this global problem? Are you still committed to meeting Paris targets? Absolutely. And 
So, I think we need to do more, though. I mean, we're, Canada is less than 1.6% of the entire footprint. We could eliminate the whole thing, and it's not going to solve the problem. So we have to take a leadership role here at home, but we have to leverage our technology and our resources to the people that are the substantive contributors. So w w would you be, ag you know, uh, I mean, the last Conservative campaign, uh, you know, the anti-carbon tax uh, rhetoric was front and center in that campaign. Uh, do you feel the same way that, that Andrew Scheer felt about a carbon tax and how we have to stop it at all cost, or is it uh, does it have a place? Well, uh, the provinces have carbon taxes in places in, in several of our provinces, and they have jurisdiction to do that. And we have to see that. But you said they don't work, so it, no, they don't work. But two thirds of the people that got elected to parliament came from a party that was, you know, in favor of a carbon tax. So while I would say it's punishing on the poor, and we really have to address that and put the um, incentive where you want to get the emissions reduction. How would you deal with the voices in the party that uh, want to reopen the abortion debate? And we're hearing from some of them, one, one candidate, prominent, well, not prominent candidate, but uh, has made prominent uh, remarks, uh, Mr. DeCarry. Uh, what about those in the party who want to reopen the abortion debate and, and may want to reopen the same-sex marriage debate? What's your view on that? Well, the party's view is clear that we're not going to reopen the abortion debate. Um, within that, I would say we're a big tent party. We have the full range of uh, you know, pro-life to pro-choice people. Um, the party will not bring anything forward. I believe in uh, protecting people's rights and freedoms. So the rights of conscience for people to vote how they want to vote, for example, and I'll continue to do that. Okay, uh, but if it's, a, if it's at odds with party policy, why wouldn't a leader just say, this is, not, this is at odds with party policy? I'm not letting you bring it forward. There'll be consequences if you do. Well, uh, you know, that is a position that I've heard and I'm listening to the feedback that I'm hearing from people within the party at this time. Um, but at this point, I, I think in the interests of democracy, uh, members are duly elected and they're supposed to be able to bring whatever they want in terms of private members' business. And I think, um, you know, we need to allow due process. We, we don't have a majority of pro-life uh, people in this Conservative Party. So I think, you know, while they have the freedom to bring their view, it would never pass. Right, but you, you, you could have, you would have the power, one would think, as a leader to say, uh, you know, pr yes, private members, uh, backbench MPs are allowed mm -hmm. to bring forward legislation on all kinds of things, or motions on all kinds of things, but you could say as a leader, uh, you're not going to bring forward a motion uh, as a member of this caucus that's at odds with party policy. Right. So and I it's think not those, on. Those discussions will happen, but uh, you know, as a leader, I don't think squashing people's rights is necessarily um, a good leadership tactic. Okay. Um, so I'm trying to get, so there's two things at play here. One mm -hmm. is the leadership of the party, and then of course, y if you win, you would love, uh, you would want to then go on and become the Prime Minister of Canada and win Indeed. the next election. But we know in the last election campaign that issues around those, you know, problems are in, in communicating the leader's position or uh, ambiguity, lack of clarity. Mm -hmm. uh, but do you share the same position as Andrew Scheer then? That it, no, as a I, government, we wouldn't bring it forward, but uh, members can? Uh, as That's a government, saying, we won't bring it forward. At this point, uh, you know, I'm open to working with the members to make sure that their rights are protected. I think um, we will have more discussion this November at the party convention, and I think, uh, you know, that will inform the, the path forward. Okay, um, but to get clarity on that, so is, is, you, you, I'm not going to bring it forward at all. Right, but but isn't wasn't that the position of Andrew Scheer in the last election? And how much do you think that hurt the Conservatives in that campaign to have this position that says we won't bring it forward as a government, but it's not dead within the party? Uh, you know, I think that uh, people just had difficulty um, believing Andrew because he always seemed quite nervous when he talked about the topic. And I'm not nervous about this topic. I'm a woman. I think that 77% of Canadians want abortion services available, and the role is to represent Canadians. Okay. And do you have any concerns at all when Lisa Raitt of the Leadership Election Committee says that each candidate will be scrutinized to ensure their views uh, align with party policy? Do you think what you're saying today aligns with party policy? Absolutely. I am fully on board with the party policy. We're not reopening the abortion debate, and it's a checkbox on the leadership forum, which I just submitted today. Okay. Uh, how's your French? Je parle très bien le français. So you... Um
I worked in Quebec for about 15 years with Dow Chemical and Worley Parsons, uh, traveling back and forth. And so uh, between that and arriving here on the hill and having a, a French teacher to teach me all the parliamentary jargon, um, I feel very comfortable to do interviews in French and also uh, to debate. How important should it be? Because you've, uh, you probably saw on the weekend yeah. that some of the Quebec media were savaging Peter McKay's French. Uh, in his campaign announcement. Uh, I think it's really important to speak both official languages of the country, to be able to understand the people of Quebec and have them understand you. Marilyn Gladden, uh, candidate, declared candidate for the Conservative Party leadership. Uh, always good to talk to you. Thanks for your time today. Thank you, Peter.